our new session of Hortensia's TV show. Today we are going to talk about the international business life and the topic of the day will be internationalization strategies. We will have three very important guests in our show that are Carol Banegas, Maria Paula Porras and Cristina Diez. They will be telling us all the story and the importance that Innis Killing has had uh, in the wine industry and they will talk about especially ice wine that is a specific category of wine. Hello everyone! As Hortensia has told you before, uh, my name is Carol Banegas and my partner is Maria Paula Porras and we are glad to be here with you. Um, we will answer many questions that our uh, audience will make through a phone call. So, uh, let's begin with it. Okay, so talking about some history, uh, the first um, Hiram Walker was an American that has a dis distilled cider mm -hmm. and he decided to, to have a whiskey distillation because he saw a big opportunity. So um, for some issues in Michigan, he decided uh, to go to Canada and he bought some land. Um, and he produced uh, his first barrel of whiskey in 1854, and it was and it was so popular because it had quality and purity. After this, uh, he decided to bottle his whiskies, and the competitors didn't didn't have like a name, and uh, Walker decided to put Walker's Club whiskey. Um, this whiskey was uh, such a big uh, success, so he went to USA. But the Congress said that uh, the the brand has to had had to be Canadian club um, whiskey. Uh, this was because um, the government want, wanted to stop uh, the Americans to buy uh, this whiskey, but it didn't happen and the, the brand became more popular and, and Walker um, uh, built a railway to transport these raw materials and finished goods and both more, more land. Well, also, um, talking about Canadian wine reputation, we can say that uh, Walker and another man called uh, Seagram that was like one man that uh, created an enterprise, a big enterprise of um, this beverage. So they they work very hard for the reputation worldwide of Canadian wine. What happened was that at first uh, it was very difficult because um, there was like a huge market of other beverage and spirits. So wine wasn't very really re relevant. Uh, for them, but then uh, with many many agreements, for example, when the free trade agreement um, happened, many things happened. So wine become like growing that market. So like then in 2002, uh, the value and the volume of wine produced in that place was. Uh, growing because of the appropriate conditions of Canada and that's like uh, when Canadian wine began growing and growing and growing worldwide. Another important aspect to consider with this reputation was the provincial control over alcohol sales in Canada. In order to manage all these things that Carol was explaining, after the prohibition ended, the, the lawmakers instituted a new system in order to to manage all these things and was called the three-tier system and it consisted on, on three aspects depending on the segment of, of which the wine was going to go that was tier one producers, tier two wholesalers and distributors and tier, tier three retailers. This system was created to prevent the um, recurrence of abuses in the distribution in order to have a better reputation and be well known all over the world. Here the Liquor Control uh, Board of Ontario was founded in 1927 to control all these things and in this way the wine was really well known all over the world. 
Okay, I have to add that even that the wine industry in Canada was growing, uh, it also had a big challenge because the, um, the largest uh, consumption was in Europe mm. uh, be, with 15 liters of wine per capita in, in countries like France, Italy, Portugal and Spain mm. and in Canada and USA it was only 7.9 liters per capita. Um. Well, now we will answer uh, the question, so we will wait a little bit for the call to, to be processed. Well, we will take out our first call. Uh, good night, Maria Paula, Cristina and Carol. I would like to know why was it so difficult for wine industry to have a huge market share during that years? and. Why was it so difficult? Which were like the facts that made it uh, like for not wanted for a lot of users uh, of people from Canada. So, if I understood the question, what you want to know is why it was so difficult to gain a market position or market share share in this market. This is mainly because uh, other beverages and spirits were most more popular like beer or common wine because as people didn't know what was ice wine it was very difficult for us to enter an, an unknown market with an unknown product thank you for your question we will be, we will be looking forward for answering new questions on our next session see you next sunday bye <laughs>
which help the firm to get ice wine in a good position and get a uh, recognized market share with this important product. Well, now we will receive the, the, the calls from our audience, so we will come in in a seconds. Well, right now we will receive our a call of the, of the session. And Hi guys, I love you and I love Hortensia show. I would like to know, as you said, it was very difficult for the product to get known in the market. So what was the initial uh, strategy for the product to get um, a place in the market? Thank you. Uh, well, the company uh, had two strategies by that time. Uh, the first one was to have the same price in all the duty-free duty outlets around the world. Um, and the second one was that the company held so testing events to educate the people uh, about the, the ice wine and the brand. of Hortensia's TV show. The topic of the day is going global. Here we will know all the internationalization strategies and all the important aspects that made Vinker's enterprises become known all over the world. Now talking about going global, as Hortensia said in her introduction, the first place that uh, Vinker considered to enter was the United States. It was a very difficult task because the United States was a very competitive market and um, it has the largest consumers of New World Wine by both volume and value. So the first strategy um, in skill and use was to enter in a higher class segment. First, it was only available in important and the most prestigious restaurants and second, it made um, a partnership with a um, glass producer in order to produce a specific glass for consuming ice wine. So it gave, it gave a mutual benefit for the ice wine because it was going to be consumed and the, crystal, the plastic or crystal producer because it was going to be used and popular in these important restaurants. These strategies were very um, successful and uh, the company also conducted many other strategies, such as variety of marketing events, in which many celebrities consu consumed the product and made it very popular, and also because there were many medical issues and, and studies that demonstrated that the ice wine gave many health uh, benefits, uh, uh, avoiding or preventing um, heart diseases or um, or many things like that. With all this, um, ah, and also because people uh, always wanted to drink something after dinner or after lunch, and everything they drank before had had a very uh, big alcohol degree, and these ice wine didn't have it, so it was also very uh, successful. This took only three years, and by 2003, uh, in Skilling had been awarded a very important uh, prize that was the New World Winery of the Year by the US uh, wine magazine, Wine Enthusiast. Well, um, another place uh, was like uh, entry to Europe. So right here at first, like in 2001, it was very difficult for the company to enter, uh, mainly because of the restrictions in regulations of um, importing sweet wines, but um, after some time or and some months in the same year, um, the European Union was a little bit more, more flexible in this, so they could import uh, ice wine, and it was a victory for the company. Okay, with the success of the ice wine, uh, other companies saw an opportunity to to create and develop other products. Uh, such as the main pinnacle, um, he created the pinnacle ice uh, cider, a producer uh, from frozen apples, 
and uh, La Faz Caché de la Pomme uh, created two ciders products, uh, Neige, that it was synthetically uh, produced um, by, by pressing and freezing the, the juice um, Frimas, that was more authentically and this product was uh, by leaving the apple uh, in the trees until freeze. So, as entering to new marketplaces, it was not easy. There was also another important problem that was the imitation products. There were two types of imitation products. One, uh, the first one was a counterfeit product that was sold as a copy of the original Ice One brand. And the other one, the one that uh, Maria Paula was talking about, that was the one that was artificially made. This um, gave a very bad competition, or not Leo, because they produced the wine in a cheaper cost of production, so they sold it in a cheaper price. So what happened, people preferred to buy the one that was cheaper and not the, the original one. Also, people that didn't know uh, how the product was, uh, tried these artificially made ice wine and they had a bad experience. So in this in this order of ideas, uh, Innis Killing lost uh, potential clients that didn't know the original product and tried the the artificial one that didn't taste uh, in the same ways in the same way. Well, uh, as Christina said, these situations um, made that the company had like uh, an oversupply and uh, the market wasn't like demanding all of the practice, all, all of the uh, ice wine that the company was um, producing. So there, that was like a critical moment uh, for the company, mainly because of cost, mainly because of market share. And that's where um, many, many uh, pe people or countries uh, began to question if the company was going to continue or, or what was going to happen with, with the company. Uh, well, right here is the moment where we will receive uh, the next question, the next call, uh, so we will, we will wait for it. Well, we already have uh, our question, so we will, we will receive it and let's listen to it. Hi guys, I'm so excited to be talking to you in this Ortation TV show. I want to ask, uh, what do you think is going to happen with the company with all these issues and all these competence? Well, um, for answering this, answering this question, we must take uh, into account that uh, the market is very uncertain. So right now, there is no very clear uh, route of action, but what we will do is to have like a huge, a big portfolio of products uh, for the market to um, to to have access to it, so that's the principal thing. We won't stop operations, or we won't stop um, our production or our job. We will control it, and we will um, work with a great portfolio. International Business Life and Vincre Enterprise. Here, the topic of the day will be internal internationalization strategies and entry modes. We will know all the internationalization strategies that firms have and the possible entry modes for firms to enter new markets and go global. Well, for this uh, final part of the show, we will answer which is the strategy of the enterprise and if it is internationalization. Um, mainly because um, the product, the ice wine, can only be produced right in Canada because of the conditions of the environment right there. Uh, secondly, the entry mode was exportation uh, because uh, the company developed a relationship with the duty-free uh, shops and also with some restaurants around the world and other and airports. And third, with the case solution, we will propose three main ideas. The first one is to make advertisement campaigns in order uh, for people to know what is the real ice wine, for them not to consume the wrong one and to love the real one. Second, uh, we will generate norms and rules uh, for the production of ice wine because as we already said, 
uh, ice wine can be only produced in certain regions with certain temperatures and that things. So if it is not produced in that with that um, characteristic, it would not be considered ice wine. And the third one is to educate educate consumers to understand the category of what is the real ice wine. With all of this, we have answered all the um, the questions of our audience, and we have explained all the um, international business life of in skilling. Hope Thank you guys all enjoyed this TV show. Thank you very much. Cheers! Bye. bye.